Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to share customer finishes as well as my own personal projects and today it's all about personal projects. I'm going to be going over my 2024 plans and show you what I have in the works. So I am in my sewing room today. Instead of filming uh, in my normal spot, I just decided this is where I do my sewing. This is where I have all my projects stored and it was just easier to film in here. It's a little cozier, but it was just easier to film in here rather than take all the projects into the other room. So thanks for joining me in my sewing room. Um, this may end up being more of a whip parade. If you're familiar with floss tube, um, a lot of times floss tubers like to do whip parades showing all their works in progress and um, as I began pulling out projects to see where I was on some of my things what I wanted to do on other things Wow <laughs> I have too much going um, it kind of felt like the we've only moved one time in our married life we have been married almost 33 years and we've only moved one time in that um, time frame and when we moved we only had two children so um, but I never felt more materialistic as when we moved because when you start pulling things out of cupboards and closets and realizing how tightly you had packs stuff packed in there and how many trips it took in a moving van to move the family. It just, I never felt more like a hoarder <laughs> or more materialistic. And that's about the way I felt yesterday when I started pulling out projects um, and fabrics and patterns and things that I wanted to work on. And wow, do I have a lot going. So there is no way physically possible that I could accomplish everything that I'm going to show you today and probably this isn't even half of it. Um, most of what I'm going to be showing you today is either things that are already in the works, things that are already kitted up, and I'll explain that in just a minute, or projects that um, are like on the yes I want to do these this year. But I have a whole stack of other stuff that um, is on that back burner that someday I'd like to do or I already have fabrics that I want to do something with or I already have a pattern that I'd like to do sometime but it's not necessarily for right now because those um, those ideas aren't fleshed out yet I don't quite know what I want to do with those so today I'm only going to show you the things that um, some of them are some works in progress that I've been having I guess in in quilting we call it UFOs um, unfinished objects you know we're in floss tube in cross stitch we kind of we kind of call them whips works in progress I guess it's UFOs to me I kind of consider ones that I started a long time ago and I'm just pulling back out where works in progress in quilting are kind of more like your quilt alongs those things that you're doing just little by little you're doing little steps at a time you're not trying to accomplish the whole thing at once so there may be a little bit of a difference in terminology there but I have tons to show you today. First of all, let me just start out and show you how I am organizing these. First, what I did, first of all, is just took one of my Lori Holt um, books. This is just a, um, a notebook, blank pages, you know, lined pages. And um, I just made several lists, first of all. I made a list of my current quilt alongs or ones that I'll be starting here in January. I then turned the page and I made a list of all my whips, things that I'm currently have in progress, that I have done something with the pattern already, or it's something that um, several of the projects I'll show you today were ones that um, I purchased at an auction because they were half done and I wanna go ahead and finish them. Um, or I bought, you know, kind of like that. I bought from somebody else because they decided they weren't going to finish them and I want to. So those I considered whips because there's part of the project that is already finished. Then I have another list of kitted things. And these are ones that either I bought the kit, so I have the pattern and the fabrics. All I got to do is start. Or I have put the pattern with the fabrics that I want to use and I'm ready to start. I have a whole list of those I want to show you as well. Then I did make a list of things that I want to do and I'll, I just have a very short list of those because there's some things kind of more skill builders on my part that I want to work on this year just to kind of expand um, my knowledge in the quilting world. One, so that I can be a help to you. Two, so that I can see if maybe I've been doing it the, the hard way, <laughs> you know, for several years and maybe there's an easier way as new products um, come out. And so some of those are some product related things that I want to work on and I'll show you those. 
Then I also, these may not be a list that you need to make, but I also made a list of things that need to be long-armed. Those are my personal projects that need to be long-armed, not client quilts, but, and then those things that I need, those personal projects that still need binding, that, you know, I finished and then kind of tucked them away and have never finished. I have three or four of those. Um, a couple big quilts and a couple small projects that still need binding. Why? Why? I, I can't. I have no excuse, I don't know. But those might be some lists that you want to make too as you're starting the new year and kind of getting your uh, feet under you, deciding what you're gonna do for the new year. So let me just start walking through one more thing before I do that. Once I decide, or maybe as I begin work on these, um, I did purchase the um, Lori Holt Busy Bee Quilt Project pages. Um, these are just, let me show you. I've put them just in a plain white binder. You could, you know, you could get fancy and buy her other binder. I might, I don't know, or I might just stick with the white one. But inside here is how you can list all your current whips in here. And then each one, you can write down what, write everything about it. So I can write all my notes about it, when I started it, when I finished it, when I plan on finishing, where I'm at in the process, any things that I changed. Um, all my fabrics and just all the notes. I can make all my notes on here. I don't want to start putting things in here until I'm exactly sure what I'm going to be working on. So you're kind of helping me with that today because just sitting and talking about them kind of flushes them out and kind of helps me to decide, yes, this is one I want to do or not do. So I have these stuck in the binder, but I have not started writing on any of them. Um, I might go ahead and purchase the calendar pages that she um, published this year too. And the reason is because with the, with the calendar pages, one, I can keep track of what I worked on each day and I think that's fun, kind of like I do in cross stitch in my uh, year of days. Is that what it's called? Year of days? Book of days? <laughs> Whatever it's called. Um, but also because the calendar pages come with some tabs, um, some thicker um, sheets that have the tabs on the edge so that I can kind of mark the different projects and I think they're really cute and I don't think they're available separate from the calendar pages so I may just go ahead and purchase that as well might as well make it pretty you could keep track of these things in any kind of notebook that you want I like making things cute I like making them um, fun to look at and just it it draws me in and makes me want to start so we are first going to start with the quilt alongs that I either have currently going on or that will be starting soon. So first of all, let me just run through quilt alongs that I have going on currently that I'm working on. So if you follow me at all, you know that I am um, I subscribe to the Fat Quarter Shop Sew Sampler Box and right now we are, are in the middle of the Pressed Flowers Quilt Along. So that is something that I will continue to work on this year. So far we have nine blocks done. And like I said, if you followed my other um, videos, you know you've seen these already. But this will finish up in April, I believe. And then, well, that one's upside down. Uh, I will be finishing this up in April. And hopefully we'll get it um, pieced together, assembled, and then able to um, long arm it. But that one is continuing to go on. It's one block. A month it is not a super intensive time involvement um, and it's pinks and browns that I already have all the fabrics for but then with the sew sampler box they always I assume they will again start a new one with the following box which would be May and so as the year goes along I will be keeping you um, updated on the current sew along with that but so in regards to that, I also have the quilt along from last year that actually finished up last April. It was called the Bliss Quilt Along. I have all of the blocks finished. Let me show you those. This was a pattern done by Joanne Figueroa. I actually used, um, I think I used her, I used some of her fabrics, but I didn't use exactly the called for ones that were in the um in the patterns but this one was a cute you know and at this point i don't even know where i put the setting instructions that they had oh yes i do <laughs> i'm organized and i didn't even know it so um i do have the setting instructions i do have a little bit more um 
piecing to do for the setting instructions. So all of the blocks that we did, the 12 blocks that we did go around here and then a little bit of extra piecing to do for the setting. So here are the blocks that I had for the Bliss Quilt Along. And there's no reason that this can't be done very, very soon. I have some other fabrics of hers um, that I had purchased to go with this. So it's all ready, it just needs to be done. So I guess this would be more considered a whip, but I did, you yeah, know, I have it under the whip, so I don't know why I pulled it out to show you now, but I did. <laughs> so here are my 12 blocks. And these are so cute. And that is the Bliss Quilt Along. All I need to do is assemble the quilt top. So that is actually a work in progress and not one of my quilt alongs, but we jumped ahead. <laughs> okay, so another quilt along that I am starting actually here in January is with my Quilt Circle membership. And we have decided to do a six month quilt along of the Somerville pattern by Thimble Blossoms. This is Camille Roskelly. And um, we actually start cutting next week. I'm so excited and it's been so fun inside Quilt Circle to um, see everybody's fabric picks that they've done and um, it'll be exciting to get started on this. So let me show you my fabric picks. So recently on a trip back to Wisconsin to return our son to college, we um, hit a few quilt stores on the way home and I found a lovely little quilt store in Northern Illinois. And there is where I picked up my fabrics for this quilt along and this is what I have gone with. These are all reproduction, maybe reproduction color, you know, Civil War reproduction, Kim Deal quilts. I have some yardage as well. And these are Kim Deal type colors. Not all of them. Let me tell you, I, I got the, um, some of these. This one is Jill, this is Stonebridge by Jill Shawless. This will be used in the border. This one is again Jill Shawless, and this will be used in the corners of the Somerville quilt along. This red, I believe, is a new Kim Deal fabric. This will be used in the border. And this gray is a Jill Shawless again, and this will be for the um, chimneys on all the houses. And this is also a new Kim Deal fabric, and this will be used for all of my background um, cutting around the houses and the patchwork. So it'll be all my white background fabric. So I'm so excited. This one starts in January and um, we'll be doing all of our cutting in January and then starting into piecing in February and it'll run through June. And this is what I'm doing with my Quilt Circle membership. And the way that we chose that particular pattern was we um, had... Um, I believe we started out with 10 patterns. We kind of had a certain size and um, type of, pa of pattern we were wanting to do. And we started out with 10 and we did a vote, got it down to three or four, and then we did another vote on that. And the top one is what we decided to do for our quilt along. Because when I went through the pattern and kind of picked out how to divide it up, it really worked well as a six month quilt along. We are planning on doing a second quilt along. This will be later in the year. And this pattern came in a very close second place for our quilt along pattern. So this joy filled pattern will be in the second half of the year in our quilt circle membership and um, will be a quilt along probably for again six months. We'll try to finish it up by the end of the year. 
So you won't be seeing this one for a while. I'll be putting it away till midsummer, but then pulling it out and starting on that one. So Quilt Circle membership has been a real joy to um, be a part of this year. And if you're interested in joining us, you can put your name on the wait list when we open the doors for new members. Probably late spring will be the next time we open. Um, you'll want to join us there. And it's been such a joy to get to know different quilters from around the country, actually from around the globe, and um, just see what we're working on, help each other out with projects, listen to different speakers, learn from one another. It's been a real joy. So those are two quilt alongs that I'll be doing this year. Another one that I will be participating in is the Quilty Fun Quilt Along. Now, I I think Fat Quarter Shop is doing this, but I think they're calling it row by row because um, all of this pattern is done in rows, obviously. This is a book by Lori Holt. I actually started this as my own personal quilt along a couple years ago. Um, I decided to do one row a month and I would do it on the birthday day of the, of the month. My birthday is in January. So I would always, on that day, I would start the quilt along, and then every month on that same day of the month, I would work on the, um, the row for that month, the way I had set it out, or the Friday that was closest to that, because usually I would stay up late on Fridays. As I'm getting older, I'm not doing that as much, <laughs> but uh, I'm learning my sleep is more important than um, even a late night sewing adventure. So I don't do that quite as much anymore. So I have several rows of this done. And when I heard that uh, Fat Quarter Shop was doing a quilt along, it's like, this will be perfect excuse to get mine done. So let me just go ahead and show you what I already have um, accomplished. I do keep this in one of my metal bread boxes here in my sewing room. And this has been a very long time since I've even pulled this out to look at it. So. Um, let's see where I'm at. So here, this was two different rows. This was the butterflies and then a patchwork row. And I have gone ahead and pieced those to get those two rows together. But this would have been two different months, I believe, that I worked on it. Honestly, I have not even looked at the schedule or even know if Fat Quarter Shop has a schedule out for it yet. Um, but I just know that they are running a, um, a quilt along for this, and so I will be participating. So this is, again, two different months. Look at all those little flying geese, and then all of the apple blocks. They were really fun. So fabrics, I'm using um, a little bit of everything. So there are some Coriolis fabrics in here. There are um, a lot of... Lori Holt fabrics, but not exclusive. I have used some others as well. You know, some of these that are, they're even in that Bliss quilt along, um, some of those. And that fun apple with the zigzags. So those were two different months and I have joined those two together. Then I have one more. I don't even know what this one was called. I'll show you the pattern here in just a second. Really cute. All right, so you can see the pattern here. I have the apple row done and the flying geese right above that. And then that is the row that I just showed you, this one right here. And then the butterflies with the patchwork is right here. So let me just look at the pattern real quick and see what my, um, I think I was just going in order of the pattern. So row one, she has you do the four patches. Then row two was the butterflies. Row three was the chevrons. Row four was the apples. Row five was the flying geese. And next is the cocoa cups. So, uh, so in the pattern itself, she's not running from top to bottom. She's doing different ones. And so that's all I had done. I'd gone through the first five months, I guess, there. And then, because a couple of the rows already joined together, I went ahead and put those together. Um, but next is uh, the Cocoa Cups, and right here in the middle, those. So I'll be joining in that quilt along this year. I have lots of Lori Holt fabrics. Um, I keep 
some, here's some, and just a, actually this is like a little spinach container. <laughs> um, those are some fabrics, but as because I've done some other quilt alongs here recently with the Calico Garden and the um, My Happy Place, I've got several, I've got more fabrics that I can choose from for this as well. So that will be really fun. Let me put this all back together so I don't forget or misplace parts to it. All right, so I have the pressed flowers. I have the Somerville. The joy-filled one will be later on in the summer, then the row along with the quilty fun. And I have one other quilt along that I would like to start. This is also being put on by the Fat Quarter Shop. This is a free download. This is a temperature quilt. Now I have seen um, many people work on temperature quilts and it's not something that ever really um, interested me. I it's like, okay, you know, it just, I don't know. It just wasn't something that really um, sparked my interest, but when Fat Quarter Shop put out that they were doing this cottage temperature quilt pattern, I thought this was really cute because what you're doing is one house is for each month and then you have the um, 30 days of that month for the, um, the half square triangles. So what you're doing is you are choosing a color grade and this is a free pattern, so I can show you this part. You can get the free pattern for yourself. I'll put the download or the link down below. They have set up color skews that you can use. Um, I believe these are Moda. Yeah, these are Bella Solids from Moda, and they've given you the temperature, the skews of different color fabrics that you can use. So you would keep track, I'm keeping track of the high temperature for the day. Um, you could do an average temperature for the day, whatever, you could do low temperature for the day, you could do um, the town you're in, you could do wherever, you know, France or Paris, you know, Paris, France would be the same thing, right? Um, London, England or wherever. You could do this for any spot in the world that you wanted to do, that you wanted to keep track of the colors, keep track of the temperature. So they give you certain color skews that you can use, but they also give you a little spot down here where you could pick your own. And this is what I plan on doing, is I was just gonna pick my own colors, but you do it in a gradation so that like this dark, dark purple right here is like minus 15 degrees. Um, no, 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 it's less than 15 degrees. This lighter purple is 16 to 20 degrees. Then this one, 21 to 25 degrees. And then it goes in five degree increments all the way up to where your reds are your hot ones. So, you know, purple is your very frigid, and then you have your cold and the blue. You have green a little warmer, yellow, orange, pink, and then we're getting into red. So I plan on going through my um, fabric and picking some fabric swatches. It may not be... You know, for this one, I may do two different reds, but they're very similar, um, just because I think this is a great way to use up scraps again. Um, and I just think it'll be fun. And I really like the whole idea of putting it into the cottages is what they're calling it. So 30 days goes into one cottage. So it's six across and five down, all right? But now you're gonna say, but some months have 31. You're exactly right. And so for January, which has 31, they put a little tree next to it, and that's where you'd put the 31st day of January. Now, this one right here is February. Now, February this year, being 2024, is a leap year, so there are 29 days. So what they've done is made one little block up here that's a solid brown. Um, that will take care of the one extra day that you would need for this time, and then you've got the rest of the other 29 filled in. March is a 31-day month again, and so 30, the first 30 would go in the house, and then the 31st day would be the tree. That's what the color of the tree that you would be making. So that's why the trees are kind of spaced the way they are. They're following a month, uh, a cottage that has 31 days instead of 30. And I think it would be great somewhere on this quilt to put 2024, maybe um, in the binding, maybe on the tag on the back. I don't know. But I just think this is really cute, and I think this would be a lot of fun. So you can tell I have not picked my fabrics yet. I have been keeping track of the temperature. I have that written down. And that's um, neat about the pattern is they, they have it all here. Because this is one block a day, um, which may be 
too much for some people maybe but you're actually making two at a time because if you're putting two colors um, you know how you make half square triangles if you layer your colored on top of your white and then you're stitching on both sides of the um, diagonal line you're going to get two blocks out of them so you could save that color one for a day that has that same temperature but they give you all of the places to write in here and then the instructions for the pattern are in the back you'll want to choose one fabric for the background fabric and I um, because these are half square triangles, you'll need one fabric that's going to be the other half of all the triangles. That could be the same that's around, used as your sashing and your border. It doesn't necessarily have to be. I have not picked any fabrics for this at all. I have been keeping track of the temperature. Um, but I just think this is really cute. First time I've ever decided to do a temperature quilt. But um, I just think this is really cute. I love houses. So if you remember last year, I tried to do a house. I was going to do a house quilt. Let me grab it real quick. <clears throat> I was going to do a house quilt with a pattern that Fat Quarter Shop had done where they where Kimberly had taken fabrics from each of the different lines that she worked on that year and then put it into a house. And I did one with, um, I made one block, and I probably redid this one three times because I never quite liked the fabric layout of it. I love the house itself. It was trying to use this was fabrics from my alpine quilt that I did of Camille Ross Kelly's and I was trying to only use the fabrics from that quilt and I just could not get it to anything that I even liked and so I kind of bailed on that project um, but I love house quilts there are so many different ones out there and actually going through my patterns I found several <laughs> house fabrics not house fabrics house patterns um, I just, I really love them. I'm really drawn to them. So I kind of bailed on this one from last year, but I think this one will be a fun um, one to do this year. So if you want to join me in this, you can grab the download and um, they give you a website where you can check the temperature in your area or for whatever area you're wanting to do it in and uh, keep track of that for the year. And I just think it'll be really cute. So those are all the quilt alongs that I have going on for 2024. Let me put this away and now I will pull out some works in progress. So I found many projects that I had in the works that I had started at some point and put away. So I'll just run through these here for you and you can, I'll show you what I've got working on. And I would really like to know in the comments down below what you think I should finish up first. <laughs> and uh, let me know what your favorite is and and to see where I start, okay? First of all, I have been working on this Leaders and Enders project. This is the Chex Mix quilt from Lori Holt. I have this sitting next to my sewing machine all the time, so I do work on it, but um, I feel like it's been lasting a long time. So here's my current stack of blocks. I counted these up and there's like over 30, 40 blocks right here. But for the quilt itself, it takes like 90 or 99, so I have a good amount. Um, still to do. I have tons of fabric scraps that I need to use up. So maybe um, maybe it's time just to start cutting some more scraps, get my um, little muffin tins over here reloaded, and maybe that would spark some more interest in getting this done a little quicker. Part of the problem is when I'm working on another project, um, my muffin tins have become depleted, and so I might do a blue and a white block you know, like a blue and a white piece. And then the next one I pull out maybe a yellow and white one. And so I've got lots of blocks over here that haven't been finished because I don't have enough yellows all in one spot to finish it. Or I don't have enough blues in all one spot to finish it. So I really need to go through my um, scrap bins and just start cutting those little squares again and replenish my tins so that I can work on this one. I love this one. I just, I great way you know this is one of those things that it's no scrap is too small because these are one and a half inch squares and when I'm working on a um, when I'm working on something else and I get down to you know say I have little triangles if I can cut a one and a half inch square out of it I'll cut that out and throw the rest away if I can't the rest gets thrown away because um, that's as small as I'll keep is one and a half inch squares but I think it's wonderful that we can use them and put them together and create this really cute um, block. 
Really fun. So the Chex Mix quilt, this is in Lori Holt's book, Scrappiness is Happiness. Um, if you don't have this book, you should. This has so many projects in it. You can make one of each block or, you know, put them all together or you can make one of each quilt. And this just is a great way to use up um, all of those scraps. And that's what she meant for the book to be. Shows you how to cut your scraps, store your scraps, use your scraps. That's most important. And uh, Chex Mix Block is one that I'm working on from this book. So that's one of my works in progress. So I mentioned that I love house quilts, and another project that I have in the works is Corey Yoder's um, Picket Fence Cottages Houses. This pattern is deceiving. These houses are much bigger than they look like. Um, this uh, pattern actually finishes at 74 by 95. So I do have a few of these houses done, and I will show you the ones I do. So I started this um, when I was going to a staycation with my local guild, and I got several houses finished, and I have all my house parts cut apart. And that's as far as I got. I worked on it that day that we were there at the staycation, and then I have not worked on it again. So I have... Um, and I would have to go back and figure out how I had this arranged. So I have these large design boards. These are my largest ones that I have. And I know I have three houses set out here on one board. So everything is cut, the roof, the windows, the doors, all the sashing for it is all laid out right here. I just really need to spend some time working through them. So I have three blocks on that one, another three blocks on this one. And it's taking up all my large design boards. I have two houses laid out on here with some extra green fabric. I don't know what that was for. And then this one's kind of muddled. I'm not exactly sure if this is one house or what the plan was for that. I don't know. Um, but this is one that I would like to work on. Again, this fabric is this... Um, I don't remember the name of the fabric line. I will find it and put it in the comments below. I don't remember... I want to say Beautiful Day, and maybe it is. Maybe it's the Beautiful Day line by Cory Yoder. And then I do have some, um, this is a larger piece. This is the background fabric that I'm using. There's a lot of background in the pattern behind all these houses, and it takes um, three yards. And so that's what I have here. I've cut most of those, but then you need some other sashings. Yep, this is Beautiful Day really pretty and then once I use this I'll be able to use the rest of this for some other project um, once I know how much I need for this uh, picket fence cottages so that's one that I have in the works and speaking of my local guild last year we did a scrappy stars block swap so if you're familiar with um, scrappy stars wonky stars wonky stars is what it's called this was one block that I made this is super simple to do you're just joining fabrics for that center square and then cutting it into whatever size I think this was a six inch five inch or six inch square um, or you could have a solid center doesn't really matter and then you're taking um, the same size white square and you're just laying blue fabric across it, in my case blue fabric, and you're just stitching a seam, folding it back so that all of your star points are wonky. So we made a bunch of these and then we traded with one another. So I have received blocks from other people. I just haven't put this together in a setting yet. Here is another blue and green one. So you can see how the points can be Short, tall, long, skinny, fat, whatever you want to do. This is a great way to use up scraps as well. Notice in this one, they did a smaller star in the corner. Isn't that cute? Great idea, because if we're joining these together, then you could have that smaller star in between the larger ones. Low volumes around the outside, and then a darker color in the middle. This one's really pretty. And notice all the whites are scrappy too. Here's a fun, playful one. Now this one isn't the, all the same color. This is a neat idea. This is all a you know, very scrappy one. Here's a little smaller one. This one is yellow. 
and a black and white one. Here's another scrappy one. And a blue-green scrappy one. So again, I consider this a work in progress. I just need to figure out a um, setting for them and put them all together and create a quilt. This would make a great little, um, I'm kind of thinking more of a baby size small quilt. This would be great to pull out when I have those new grandbabies this year and to lay out on the floor and let them play. Um, I think it would be bright stars that they could look at and um, enjoy seeing all the colors. So that is another work in progress that I have going for 2024. All right, I don't know what number we're up to, four, five of my um, current works in progress. A couple years back, maybe 2022, I don't know if this was 2023, um, I don't remember for sure, but um, Lisa Bonjean of Primitive Gatherings did this quilt along called Oh Say Can You Sew, where she put out one clue each time. This is still available, but you now have to purchase. I assume it's still available. I will check on that. But when this was coming out, each clue as it would come out would be free. And then once the next clue came out, the other one became a paid pattern. And I assume she's put all of them together now to create the entire quilt. I made it through... Um, it looks like about clue five, and that was 128 half square triangle nine patch blocks. <laughs> and um, I didn't quite get to 128, and that's where I'm snagged up. So let me show you kind of what I do have done. So I have all of these blocks done. These were real fun. This is a couple different clues. So I think we made these first, and then we made these. Um, another time and then we joined it all together and I don't even know how many of these are but all of these are done really fun and again I was all just using scraps everything from my stash um, great way to use up red white red white and blue then I have um, I have all of these red nine patches finished a bunch of those all of those are done. And then I have I have probably half, I don't know. Do you think it's half? 128, I, I need 128. Maybe I have 60 done, I don't know. <laughs> but these take a while because these are all, uh, they're just super tiny, super tiny. Let me see. These are all one and a half inch unfinished right here. And then you're joining them in the block. Um, so they're one inch finished, like this one right here would be one inch finished when you're joining it in the block. So these took a while. These took quite a while to do. And, um, so I just need to get back to these. And then let me see, here is the final setting. Um, so you can see that um, I have these star blocks done and then alternating those with this block. And I have those red uh, nine patches done. No, right here. I have the red nine patches done right here. And then this is what I'm working on right now are the four blocks that go around that red nine patch. So I'm not that far away. If I could just finish up um, all of these little guys and then there's some sashing work that's not really um, a lot. And then I'd be ready to put this whole thing together and it would be so pretty. So maybe I should make a goal by... Um, May, because I like to put out um, patriotic things from Memorial Day all the way through summer. So if I had this done by the end of May, then I would be able to use it in my decorating for then. So the next three projects I have are all ones that were started by somebody else that I have rescued. I just don't like to see projects not get finished and um, especially ones that I love the colorways and uh, just appeal to me personally. So these are three projects that somebody else abandoned that I rescued. The first of all is, um, I don't have a colored pattern for this, but it is uh, another Thimble Blossoms pattern. This is Hello Sunshine. And I have all of the fabrics, um, all of the fabrics and, and some of the blocks are even done. So let me show you what is done on this one. So 
So these are all orange and white flying geese. They need to be finished being pressed. There's a whole stack of those. There are yellow flying geese, again, that just need to be pressed. Whole stack of those. And the same with green. Then there are all of these blocks with easy corner triangles. Those just need to be pressed. Oops, I better keep these in the right order. And then there's some more flying geese and then some more blocks. All of those are done. Those just need to be some pressing done. And then here are more fabrics that are already cut, already cut. All of the white is already cut. This is like buying my own kit, isn't it? And then more fabrics that are already cut. So this will be really fun just to sit down and begin sewing on because all of the, in my opinion, all the hard work is done. <laughs> all the cutting, that's probably my um, least favorite part of the whole quilting process is the cutting. Not that I mind it. I mean, I love every part of quilting. So if I had to rank them, I would say cutting would be my least favorite, but it's still not one of those that I hate doing. Um, I'm just ready to get on to the putting it together. So I'm a little more impatient, I guess, with that, with the cutting process. So this is Hello Sunshine. This measures a 70 by 70 quilt when it is finished. And um, so really fun. I'm excited to work on this one this year. This next one is another house quilt. This one is called Winter Village. This is by Adida Sitar. This is the first pattern I have ever had of Adida Sitar's. I love her work. I have never done one of her, her quilts. So I again rescued this one. It has all of the fabrics. A lot of the fabrics. I haven't measured to see if all of them are, are here that are needed, but it has a ton of um, blues and browns and um, and cream colors and just really really cute just a lot of fabric some of them are cut I really don't know if they are cut to the size that's needed each one of these blocks is separate so you're creating each one with different size pieces um, different strips of pieces um, it's almost like the bookcase quilt that I did a couple years ago where you're putting them together in, in rows like this. That's kind of what it reminds me of. But you're adding windows. So when there's no window, you've got a bigger, a bigger section um, and then a little window or a door. I think this is adorable. Um, and this just reminds me a lot of, of, it says winter. It reminds me a lot of January. We've had snow the last few days, and so it's really been fun. And... Um, what better way than to just snuggle up with a quilt. There are some applique to be done on this, and um, all the pattern for that is in here. I would just need to trace it onto um, steam a seam is usually what I use for applique for this, or I could do it Lori Holt's way, but with these little, you know, I could do this on bias. I could, I guess, um, but I may just do the steam a seam. I don't mind doing it that way. Some snowflakes in the corner. The pattern also did come with a pillow pattern as well. What did I do with that? And it gives directions for making pillows to match. This would be a lot of fun. On our couch, we have several pillows. Um, they're actually Christmas pillows. And then, um, but in the other seasons, I have pillow covers that go over them, usually ones that match our farmhouse. Um, but this would be really fun to put winter ones on those Christmas pillows. That way you can, I don't have to store Christmas pillows somewhere else. They can be right there on the couch and I just cover them with a different pillow cover and they stay out all the time. Funny story about that is we did that at church. We had a couple of pillows on a bench um, and they were Christmas ones and then we covered them with some, I think we did black and white check fabrics and it was real cute. And then the first Christmas we're like looking around, what do we do with the Christmas pillows? We can't find the Christmas pillows. We had covered them. <laughs> you just put them into the um, into the pillow covers. They were fine. We just had to take them off, but they were like hidden right there in our sight. All right, so I have one more rescued project that I would like to show you. This one again, I think is so cute. This one I rescued. Someone um, got this far and then didn't want to finish it. This is a good baby size right now. It's all flannels on the middle part. And then um, the 
sashing or the, yeah, I guess you'd call it sashing, a little more of a flower print. And um, I love the colors together. So maybe they abandon it because and do the flowers go with the flannel? What do you think? Uh, I think it's fine. I would use it. I would finish it. But maybe they got to this point and they said maybe it's not quite right. Maybe they weren't quite happy with it. I don't know. They gave it up for some reason. But um, there's another whole stack of blocks. The quilt now is a good baby size. And so I could either use these to make a second one or I could add them to this one to make it even bigger. Um, but they're just turned either way. And so there's several of the red blue green um, flannels in the middle and it looks like actual fabric I don't think it's t-shirt you know um, flannel shirts that have been repurposed or anything like that it looks like actual fabric but again this would not take much time at all to finish up more of a homespun not a flannel I I had that wrong it looks like you know a flannel type shirt but it's not a flannel more of a it's a fabric it's a printed fabric you can tell by the back Really cute. I have no idea how old. It's all stitched. I don't think it's that old. But um, there are a few extra pieces here. And then there's a little bit of, um, of the floral print left as well. So that's one that I would like to finish. And I, I just think these projects are so fun. It was... Um, you know, you may have those projects that you get to a certain point and you think, I just really don't want to finish these, but there's somebody else that might want to work on them. So see if your local guild has a way of exchanging things like that. Our local guild has an auction each year and um, that raises money for our guild, for our programs. And so it's just an internal auction where um, we bring things, we set a price on it, and um, others in the guild can purchase those. And and then all of that money goes towards the guild for our programs. And then um, in our own, in my own Quilt Circle membership, this month we, one of the members asked if we could do like a virtual garage sale or swap. And so we have uh, set up a spot on our platform where we can um, post things that we're no longer wanting and somebody else can purchase them or you know maybe they're for free maybe it's a project like this that somebody wants to get rid of so look for those opportunities maybe you have a friend or a neighbor who wants to get into quilting and they can take over a project that you're wanting to um, pass on to somebody else as well that, but uh, don't throw it in the trash but there's always somebody that can can finish it and even if you don't like it you could finish it yourself and then donate it to um charity in some way there's great ways to use quilts they're always looking for those as well so I think those are all of my whips let's move on to some projects that I have kitted meaning I have the fabric and the pattern and I would like to work on these in 2024 as well this first one's going to be familiar because I think I showed it last year and I never got to it, but it's still on one of those that I would like to do, especially now that my So Scrappy Spools, I have that here behind me. It's ready to go on the long arm. It's all finished. I have the backing purchased. Um, just got to find time to get that done. And um, But now that I'm done with that one, I would really like to work on this Thimble Blossoms pattern. This one's called Threadbare. This again is another spool quilt, a tad bit different than the Scrappy Spools. And I had picked out all Civil War reproduction fabrics for this last year, if you remember. I have, these are ones I just had in my stash. Um, just have them sitting in a tin right here. And I had picked out a, um, a black to use for the spool ends. There will be plenty of this. There's several yards of this on this um, card right here. This is how I store my fabrics. Um, I wrap them around the, this is yardage, so it's gotta be more than a yard or so before I will put it on this. Um, and then I fold them in. You can kind of see how I folded in the fabrics and then I wrap it around the comic board. And then I store these on um, a bookcase right outside my sewing room. Uh, vertical like this so I can see all of the fabrics. This one has been sitting in this tin <laughs> along with the reproduction fabrics all year long waiting to be worked on and I have not gotten to it. So Threadbare, I like this one too. This one finishes at 76 by 76 so a nice size quilt as well and I'll be excited to work on this one this year. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. But I said that last year didn't I? 
All right, let me show you another one. So I mentioned the auction that our local guild has each year, and this is another project that I purchased at that auction. This one came in this nice big, um, what do you call these? I don't even know what it says, a satchel series, but you know, art project boxes. These are all red and white fabrics. Look at these. Oh, love them, love them, love them. They all came in this. I purchased it just like you saw it. And it did include this pattern. Somebody had pulled all these fabrics and was going to work on this project. This is from McCall's um, Winter 2013-2014. <laughs> this is called Scarlet Galaxy, but look at that quilt. Isn't that beautiful? Fairly simple. You know, it's a patchwork block and a star block alternated. I just think that's beautiful. And then it's got a um, flying geese border around the edge. So I'm pretty sure I'll probably just do this, this very, um, this very pattern. Let me see the size of it. 60 by 76. I, I think this is beautiful. Really, 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 really pretty. So that is on my kitted list for 2024. And here's another one that I have. So another one that I would like to work on at some point this year, this may not get done um, this year, but it's one of those that I have had on my bucket list for quite a while, and I purchased this kit this year. This is Cozy Up by Corey Yoder. I love this quilt. Um, I just love this because all the years that we had a pumpkin patch, and this just is so cute. The trucks and the patchwork pumpkins I just think is adorable. I purchased this as a kit so it has the pattern. It has all of the fabrics in it as well. It's one of those you almost hate to move it because it's so cute. Everything packaged just like that. All the fabrics are in there and then um, the pattern as well. So this is on my list. This one measures 72 by 80. This would be a great one to have out in the fall time. Just love, 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 love the fabrics, love the pattern, love it all, love it all. So this is kind of done, you know, in rows as well. So maybe I could work on this um, as I work on the row by row for the, um, the Quilty Fun one. Maybe I could do some of this one too. Or once I'm done with the Quilty Fun one, then start this one right after that because it's kind of done in the same manner. I don't know. That's really cute. So another one that I have packaged up, ready to start. This was a pattern that was that came in one of my so um, so sampler boxes. This was called a starflower quilt. I think this is really a cute quilt. And um, let me show you. So on the back, you can kind of see. I think this is just a really cute quilt. I love the fabrics. This is um, the Sunday Stroll by Camille Roskelly. So I have the Fat Quarter Bundle. And then one of the reasons I would like to wor work on this one is you're using the three inch square and a square paper. And one of the things I would like to do this year is kind of challenge myself to work with some of these papers that are out there and see whether um, I feel that I'm getting better blocks by using paper or whether I'm my normal cutting and sewing is fine. Um, I just want to see how I, how I do with them. And so this will be a great project to work on. I love the fabric line of this. I do have several of more fabrics that I can use for binding or for um, backing. I haven't quite decided, but I had those in my stash as well. It does need some background fabric. It needs an inner border, so I could use the... Um, they chose this, uh, this striped one for the inner border. I might be able to use the floral. I don't know. And then they use a floral for the binding. So this is um, one of those I'd like to get to. It may not be high on the list this year, but it is one that I would like to get to just so that I can try out some of those papers. I don't even remember what... This is copyright 2021, so this pattern was out several years ago. Really cute. I love, I like Camille Roskelly's lines, um, especially ginghams. Really fun. And another one that I have. Let me pull out my binder. I had done a quilt. I had long-armed a quilt for a client um, 
a while back and it was a GE Designs quilt and I have the I have the pattern somewhere but this is just a black and white printout. This is a called Kira and this is by GE Designs. I loved this quilt when I was working on it for a client and so I purchased the fabrics <laughs> and I purchased the pattern um, because I wanted to try this one. This one uses um, a stripology ruler from what I understand and that's something that I've never done either and so I really want to challenge myself this year to try to do some of those other rulers and papers and like I said at the beginning some of those other notions, um, those other um, tools that are available now that that maybe when I started quilting 20 years ago weren't available but so much has come along and and I'm kind of one of those I have what I have so why change um, but it might be good for me and just so I can uh, know what you're working on too I can see the struggles you may have in working with some of these and are they really worth it or not worth it so let me show you the fabrics that I have picked out for this one. Another one of my favorite, favorite finds this year is um, Zen Chic. I love Zen Chic's, um, I love her style. It's kind of modern, but kind of farmish. It's kind of that modern farmhouse type feel, but with a hint to old. I love um, these old, you know, time sheets and things, kind of same line of Tim Holtz. I, I love his stuff too. So these are the fabrics that I purchased. These are in the brown, the golds, the mustard, I guess I want to say, the grays and the blacks. Um, and that's exactly the way the quilt that I had worked on for a client with this Kira quilt that I had worked on for a client, the colorways that she had done. And I just, just loved it. So I have purchased the fabrics, all the fabrics I need for this quilt. Um, and I have the pattern, so again, it's just one of those that's sitting there waiting for me to start. And like I said, my eyes are way bigger than the time I have in a day. Um, but it's always good to dream and always good to have um, projects waiting for me. And I really, really would like to get back to some of these this year. And that is one that I just, that would be a me quilt. That was um, for my own personal enjoyment. I just really, really like that one. So let me see. I think that is all of the kitted quilts that I have. And let me move on to a couple ones that I don't have all of the, the things that are needed for these quilts, but these are ones that I would, uh, I kind of have on my radar as well. So just a few more projects um, and then I hope you are inspired to go out and make your own list of things that you want to accomplish here in 2024. This first one is one that you are familiar with. I believe I showed this last year, but it is still on my want to do list. And this is Corey Yoder's Wooly Stars. I think this is just adorable. Again, it matches um, my decor in my farmhouse and I uh, love the star on it and the sheep is just so cute. We don't have sheep. We have some um, goats but no sheep but I just think this is absolutely adorable. I have seen this done where they did different colored stars in each one of the sheep. I thought that was a really cute um, way to do it too but this is definitely something that I would like to work on. I don't have any fabrics picked out. I don't have any idea. I just have the pattern. Um, so that is one that I would like to work on at some point here. Something else that um, that I kind of hinted to last week, I received this from a viewer, is the Great Granny Squared. If I can finish up my Chex Mix blocks, then um, I think I would use this as a Leaders and Enders project, and I would really like to do it. The quilt that I quilted uh, earlier this year with this one, um, I just loved. I just really liked it and a great way to use up scraps again um, which I need to do <laughs> and I really like this one so this is on my short list of projects as well and again in the vein of trying out some different um, skills I picked up this book recently when we were um, in the quilt stores um, in Illinois this is called Urban Farmhouse Gatherings. This is by Lisa Bongean of Primitive Gatherings. The reason I picked this one up is because this uses triangle paper, which um, Lisa Bongean is available at Fat Quarter, not. This is available, it may be available at Fat Quarter Shop too, but I know it's available at Primitive Gatherings. And just let me, the um, this kind of 
of triangle paper where it comes in a sheet. And so you have larger pieces of fabric. Maybe you have fat quarters that you're laying on top of each other, and then you're laying the triangle paper on top of each other and on top of that, and then you're cutting to make your half square triangles. Um, and that's a skill that I want to try out this year. I also have some triangle paper from Fat Quarter Shop that this one you cut your strips into six and a half inch wide. They're all different sizes, but this is the two inch finish. So once it's finished in your quilt, it would be two inches. Um, this paper is six and a half inch wide, so you cut your fabrics that wide and you lay out this onto your fabrics to um, make the half square triangle. So this is a couple of projects that I would like to try just to see how well I like using the paper and the different sizes, um, whether it's worth my time and investment into those. And so I will keep you updated on how, um, what I think about those. I had a couple to go along with this book I already had these fabrics in my stash. These are some um, charm packs from the Urban Farmhouse Gatherings line. I, again, just love these. And these will not work with the triangle paper, but I could use these fabrics for some of the projects in that book. And um, again, just love those. Love the grays and blacks and how that matches with my whole farm decor around our home. So let me check my list, but I think that is enough to keep um, five people busy for 2024, don't you think? <laughs> so that's everything from things that I've already worked on, my quilt alongs that I have starting up or continuing on. Those are projects that, um, whips that I already have in progress that I really need to finish up. And like I said, some of those aren't going to take too much to do. And other ones that I have kitted that... Um, are going to take a little bit longer and really need um, some more attention, but they're sitting there waiting on me, and I would just love to finish a lot of these projects in 2024. So that's my whole list. Have you made a list? <laughs> I'd love to see what you're working on, and if you've got plans for 2024, I will be um, sitting down now that I've got kind of things spread out and um, at least pulled out what I really want to work on. I will be sitting down with a calendar and trying to put these into some um, specific months during the year, trying to get these scheduled out so that um, it's not just this big pile sitting there. But I know that this month I want to work on this and I make it a, a, um, um, a concerted, is that the right word? I make it... Um, uh, an effort to work on these and to get those finished and to set some goals for myself. I love setting goals and making um, plans and schedules and so um, I can do that with my quilting as well. And so those are the projects that I have out and ready to work on for my personal sewing. Still working on the long arm and um, that's always going in the background while I'm working on my personal projects. Love seeing what you're working on. I hope you'll send me pictures. If you are in need of long arm quilting services, um, my information is down below where you can download the long arm prep instructions and order form there has all the information you need. If you're interested in joining the Quilt Circle membership, doors will be opening. I, again, I think it'll be late um, springtime, but maybe you can join us at that time so that you can join us for our joy-filled quilt along that starts in mid-summer time. So all that information is down below. I'll try to link as many things as I can find um, that I've shown today down below. So if any of it you want to work on with me, I would be happy for you to join me on any of these projects and um, you can keep me motivated as well. So until next week, like I always say, every quilt is worth finishing. So I hope you have lots of time to sew this week. We'll see you next week.